been uh, paying close attention to your uh, classes when you take your classes with the institute mm-hmm. and uh, you've been talking about story structure and there's a three act structure four act structure five act structure and uh, i want to say that when i started writing my story i haven't ever heard about structures so i have just started writing for me i'm writing my story like i learned in school like we learn story writing or we write composition so mm. is my story flowing or should i look into the three act structure what is story structure <laughs> what is this act structure okay See, the audience never talks about structure. Okay, films uh, or for that matter, book either become a hit or a flop based on that. The critics come to a conclusion that what was lacking in a particular project, and eventually uh, something has to be pointed out. So uh, either it's the weak character or bad structure or any one or the other thing primarily the audience is just concerned about being engaged in a story and being swept away from their real world into an imaginary world till the story comes to an end and if that is achieved they are happy with it so it's one of those things you know this is a story once shared by osho to his disciples and his crowd that there used to be a lama in the mountains of tibet you know where uh, the custom was that you know every lama before he passes away he appoints a successor and there's a book that the lama would give it to his successor so one of the successor messed up and uh, the book got damaged now he got worried thinking what he would do when it is his turn to hand over the book and he started investigating and he figured out that uh, there were a lot of things written in doctrines uh, that the monks used to follow and he started figuring out uh, the source there should be an original copy you know if it has been followed for so many years someone might have had the uh, intelligence to create a alternate copy i could probably make a duplicate and pass it on so he goes back to the source and when he reads the source is flabbergasted because while he was being a disciple to islam all his years of service to the monkhood he had understood one word celibate the monks are supposed to be celibate and when he actually read the original copy there was a spell error the original word was celebrate so <laughs> if you look at it it is an interpretation of misinterpretation of one person that has flowed down the generations and everybody has blindly followed it and because of which the monks have committed their life to celibacy so the same thing happens with the world i mean someone appears smart enough when they profess a concept and they are cocky enough to say that you know this is how it is and it should be and everybody else takes that in the bottom line is that if your story engages your audience then you're going to set a set of rules that others will follow if it doesn't do that forget the structure there 
every other person in the universe will find some or other flaw in your story. But still talking about structure, what is it? I mean, I know, should I follow it? Should I not follow it? You answered my questions that maybe I don't want to follow it because I don't know. But since uh, I'm listening to you telling your students, I'm curious about what a structure is. See, I'll tell you what. Uh, how you should look at a structure or any of these rules and formulas is that it helps speed up the process of writing. It helps you to get out of your writer's block if you are in it. For, for instance, you want, you are sitting in front of a computer, a blank page, and you can't think of what to write. You can busy yourself into outlining your story into certain structures. And because you are indulging in that act, suddenly the ideas start coming in, you know? So instead of just uh, getting up from your uh, st study desk and going and watching a movie or taking a walk, you can indulge yourself in that process. And it is like, you know, uh, like how people uh, mug up for exam, you know, you repeat it enough time till it becomes a part of you. So the outlining, the structure and everything is just a process that keeps you engaged in the story. It keeps you anchored in the story. And while you're anchored, the ideas come. And from where the ideas come, your imaginations, how you uh, view the words, those are all yours. And there's no one in this world who can say this is how it works. So if you have to discuss the structure, uh, since the era of theatres, uh, the, there was three acts for any play and all that. There was, there is to be a, a beginning, a middle and an end. Now, as things evolved, the audience evolved and uh, people introduced four acts, like especially in, in Indian cinema because there's an interval uh, in, the, in between the film, right at the middle midpoint. Uh, Hollywood cinema doesn't have an interval. They can follow the three acts or four acts or five acts up to them, but we prefer following the four acts because two acts before the interval, two acts after the interval. When it comes to TV and uh, web series and all that, it is assumed that you know you have to hook the audience right away and you have to leave a cliffhanger at the end. So if you separate these two, then there's your three act, so it becomes your five act. So, uh, while people have been uh, tweaking these acts and uh, adapting it to the grow, uh, different needs of the audience, they have overlooked the point that uh, this by itself doesn't guarantee a successful story, a good story. This can prove and is instrumental in weaving a good story, but this doesn't guarantee a good story. Because many people, because if you look at this three act structures, four act structures, five act structures, it's available everywhere on the internet. That means every writer who can Google has stumbled across it. And they have used it in their story. Doesn't mean that every story is working, right? So, uh, I feel that uh, if you look at the structure as a guideline, then it's good. But if you look at them as a blueprint, then it could be a problem. Like you said, uh, it's for people or for writers who get a writer's block and then they can indulge in it. I think for me, if I fall into this craft, what we've been talking right from the very beginning, is when I... I can't say it's a writer's block because I know how my story will flow. I know what my story is. But what gets me stuck is I cannot write it down because then I'm caught up in the in the craft, in the acts, in the exposition, in all these big, big words. Because there are, uh, you know, the analysts in the creative field, they have divided writers into two groups. 
one who go with the free flow. For them, no rules apply. And the others who follow certain structure and outline and treatment and synopsis and all that, for them, all the rules apply. It is for you to decide which side you are. Because if you are on this side, you don't have to care about any of this. If you are on that side and if these things serve your purpose, so be it. If end of the day, you are able to churn a good content, the audience is just happy with that. Whether you took one year for it or one month for it, they have no concern about it. So when we spoke the last time about Godfather, mm -hmm. um, did Mario Puzo follow the act structure because the movie has a very nice beginning, a middle and the end. But I'm just trying to delve into his psychology. Did he believe in the act structure? Did he write it or did he just flow? See, you have to look at it from a point of view that uh, when he wrote, he wrote an all, right? It was uh, Coppola who worked with uh, Pozo to sketch out the screenplay. So, of course, uh, Mario Pozo was new to the field and he was uh, subdued by whatever Coppola would instruct him. And they teamed up in a way that one could dominate and direct the flow and other could uh, uh, follow. So, I wouldn't say that the screenplay is completely uh, Puzo's work. Strictly in the sense that uh, he was new to the craft, you know. Of course, the story is his. That's why he was hired to write it. No other writer could do the justice to it. So, uh, I'm not sure if uh, Coppola would have uh, followed it because he already, you know, uh, done a lot of films and he knew what works and what doesn't work. But uh, if you have read Godfather's uh, novel, I wouldn't think that he has dwelled into it because if you go by the structure and all that, there's a specific formula is like, you know, first 10% has to go in the act one, 15% in the third act, everything else in the middle, you can weigh the godfather against that. It doesn't fit into those formulas. Yeah, very right. Then now, uh, because you said in a screenplay, novels, do novel writers also follow uh, act structure or is it only for screenplay? Because if See, I'm... act was generally uh, specific to story. Okay, first comes the story, then it is your choice as a storyteller, whether to pursue the novel writing path or the screen writing path, you know? Either ways, you need a story first. Yeah, so do novels have to follow this structure or no? Most novels do. Oh, they do? Yeah. So... At least these days. I don't want to follow it. Uh, these days, right? See, uh, since there were people who were capable of... Uh, analyzing other people's work. They formed a formula and then that's how the rest of the world knew, right? So, how uh, do the analysts decide that this formula would work? Because they were referring to some content, right? But the, if the analysts were the first one to come up with that formula, that means whoever had written the content before that were not aware of it. So these people are just observers. Yeah, so I'm, I'm deciding I'm not going to follow any structure because that's just okay. going to get me more... See, it's like, you know, the weather report, you know, statistics. The statistics can go wrong. It can serve as a uh, guideline. You might carry an umbrella just in case. But it's, you know, there's no guarantee, no assurance that that will help you. You know, uh, thinking of the structures, it's just a random question that I'm asking, that uh, I think the Upanishads or something said, I'm not very sure if the Upanishads said, but our, uh, the human life also is in stages where there is uh, Brahmacharya and then, okay. uh, you know, what is it called? The Sansar and then you leave. Mm -hmm. Now, is this a structure of life and do you think uh, that this this is what the analysts and all have followed? Like, would... 
Am I getting it right to you? I mean, like if we talk about life, life's journey, life is a story. Every one of us from the time we are born till we die, mm. we can write a story of everything that happens. Mm. Now, when they told in the Vedas that uh, there are three or four, what do you say, Brahmacharya, Bruhacharya, whatever these charyas ah, are. Ashramas, Prasta Ashrama. Mm, yes, yeah. yes. So, are they structures of life? Again, it was some pundits' ideologies passed on to the rest of the generation. See, exactly. That means if these ideologies were not there, we still would follow the from going from an infant to a teen to an adolescence to middle age to... Okay, look at it this way. When Gautam Buddha's father came to know that the son could either be a greatest sinner or the greatest saint, he did his best, right? To m make him a good king. You know? Despite of all that, I mean, he was married at the right time, he was educated at the right time, as per whatever the norms were uh, <coughs> given at that time. Despite all that, what happened? Gautam Buddha deviated from the plan. So life is unpredictable. To fit a life into a set norm is the greatest foolishness humans can indulge in. Stupidity. So coming back to my story, is I know it's following in a linear way. Okay. Where I see how it's starting and I see how it's ending. Now, uh, Will it be more interesting if I change some of the plots, which for me should say come in the middle, if I get that particular plot right in the beginning and then jump? Mm. How uh, how should I decide on that? Should I just let it flow or to make it more interesting, can I like, you know, shift things? See, this happened to all the writers. You know, sometimes... Uh... You, you get stuck at a point, but you get ideas for another st stage of your story. Uh, now, that depends on a writer's discipline, whether you want to write, uh, jot it down somewhere and then come back to it later, in, uh, put enough information so that nothing is lost, or write, uh, develop that scene or uh, sequence and then come back here. Uh, it's individual choice and preference, but... Uh, End of the day, uh, what matters is that you don't lose an idea. So uh, every writer, even before the structures and the craft was a big thing, they used to do that. They uh, See, again, we are talking about uh, thoughts and imaginations, you know. Uh, today you might have a uh, beautiful scene in your head about Dhruv, okay? Tomorrow you might get a different scene about Dhruv's mother. Would you just wait till you get to that point to write it? Or would you record it so that your beautiful idea is not lost? No, I jot it down, no, but that's not what I'm talking about. Like for instance, right now, like I asked you in the last session, how much is more and how much is less? Mm -hmm. And you very correctly answered and I was very satisfied with what you said. But now... Uh, what I've been thinking is, I start my story uh, in the present. Okay. Just show that my character is sitting, like Dhruv is sitting in a particular place. And then I go into before one year. And then it starts to flow. And I reach the end where again I show that. So what I want to do is I don't want people to know, but of course they will know. That this is Dhruv and yeah, they will know because, you know, Bernard and Dhruv are there and in the end. But now there's a very interesting plot in my story where there are a series of uh, killings. Should I start my story with the killings and then go into something else? Or should I start my story where it starts now and then come into the present not the present, because it starts in the present, then go one year past, and then everything that happens, and it ends at the murders. Mm. 
So I'm confused now. Should I do okay. that or should I start it at the murders and what would be more interesting? See, now this is a creative uh, choice, but I'll tell you. You've watched Sixth Sense, right? Yeah. Now, what would have happened if Shyamalan had shown a sick part of that ending in the beginning? Yeah, I I would have understood it because I saw the movie and you told me I didn't understand that he's actually a ghost. Yeah, but then you understand what would have happened to the audience, and if they have cracked it in the very beginning. would they be interested in the story thereafter so the point is here's the thing and this i have explained in many of my projects especially in thriller and uh, horror you are actually asking the audience to invest their fear their concern for your character as they see the character going through some difficult time and you know that the danger is just around the corner now many filmmakers and editors think it is a smart thing to decide and go with a non linear approach but the moment you have shown the hero surviving it the fear is gone the concern is gone the audience has no reason to be invested right in certain scenario in certain story style the audience shouldn't know beforehand what is going to happen next in various other scenarios uh, especially in comedy and romance the audience can know before the character knows it serves certain purpose but in certain genre it doesn't work in your case personally if i were to doctor it i would knock off the first scene because for me it it is kind of a give away and for me it is like here's the thing in any show if you have your greatest uh, celebrity to fe- featuring you would keep him for the last right if in any game of cards you would hold your trump card for the last right hmm. so the very twist of the story shouldn't be given away right away you know this is what i feel in the sense that <coughs> if i have seen him alive and for some reason i know that i'm going back in the past and his fr- uh, friends are getting killed i know for sure that he is not going to get killed right and i am rooting for my hero right yeah but even when in my story when everybody gets killed he doesn't get killed but what if the audience has not seen the first scene then they are emotionally invested what if will this hero whom i am rooting for survive it okay see while you are viewing the story you can see the whole thing but for the audience it's a first experience right as the story starts they have no clue if this guy will survive unless you have given it away yeah for me how i was thinking is that uh, i wasn't thinking about his survival or not i knew for sure he is the one who survived but because of the incident that happened he totally lost it and that is why wherever he is he is my story is actually the whole thing is based somewhere on the coastal maharashtra or you know the konkan area hmm. and then he is somewhere found in the himachals okay so how did he reach there is how i thought that that is why he was sitting there all unkempt and then after that first scene which you are now saying is a giveaway i come back to what happened one year ago where everything was fine so don't you think my audience would go with this thing that okay if he was sitting there but one year ago he was like this then what led him to go there but here's the thing right see today uh, let's assume in a way that he's got an injury right but one year ago 
he had a near death experience which would be more drastic for the audience near death experience so if he's gone insane he's still alive right and to be honest in that scene you wouldn't be giving away everything you would show up person who is eccentric and all that but you would not describe the whole s- story of his psyche right no and so i don't even want to actually show that it is him i want my first now see that's what the see story. normally when how we go about these stories is we put a scene in the beginning to hook the audience right no if that scene is your hook what is the one question that leaves the audience you know wondering about is that okay so this was a crazy guy but one year ago he was sane no but wait 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 let me say that now that is what is confusing because when i started writing and in this whole thing of whether i would write a screenplay or whether i would write a novel i think i gave away a lot of things in the writing mm. but how i thought it in my head mm. was uh, if somebody is reading or if somebody is uh, watching I didn't want means I wanted that my first scene be completely disconnected to my second scene or part of the story okay. and my first scene only connects at the end of the movie so I wanted that factor where people are like why is the first scene there so I did not want to uh, introduce or to divulge who Dhruv is in the first scene I wanted it so disconnected that they just see some random person sitting but of course you know a little bit go into it it's a completely different location and then come into the uh, come into the real thing what is happening and the two people through because that one is through i'm just telling you but when it starts to flow to keep the suspense i don't want my audience to know that that one was through i want my audience to uh, think who the hell was that why why is she had written about that first thing in himachal and then is there a connections so i want to take them throughout the thing till they reach himachal again that why was the first scene there how am i going to achieve that in story okay here is the thing not in a movie there's a thing called setup and payoff okay let's say that you, your parents promised you a gift a week later you followed up and they said yes we will give you the gift Three months later, you followed up, and they said, "Yes, we will give you the gift." Not yet. Three years later, you followed up, and they said, "Yes, we will give you." What would happen to your interest level? Go down. The same happens with the audience. If you are set setting up something, the payoff should be at the right amount of time. Okay. So... If it's too late. it has defeated the purpose if it is too early it has defeated the purpose so that means then when i'm writing and the way i wrote or i visualize it it's okay for the audience to okay now this is to complete see the right points. now unless they have seen one of those characters whom they are going to see immediately not at the end of the story but immediately then there is at least a question how did that and this connect then i think what i wrote is going in the right way but what i was thinking now you just answered my doubt mm-hmm. that i shouldn't keep it till the mm-hmm. very end of it mm-hmm. because then okay mm-hmm. i get that now 